Greetings, Nobbler here. This video will show you how to build the medium tower of stone in Valheim. I am going to be building in debug mode, so I will not have an estimation on the amount of materials needed to construct this tower, and it will be using the 1x2 stone bricks for this build. Stone wall 2x1. For each stone that you set at the foundation, you'll want to do one click or one rotation. That is, I believe, uh, a 22 degree rotation. So here we have the foundation of the medium tower of stone. And I like to use these towers as workspaces. Um, in this video, I will be demonstrating what it looks like to build a kitchen inside of a medium tower like this. Uh, it might seem a little cramped for a kitchen, and you will not have a lot of storage room, but I think that the aesthetic of having a stone kitchen as a uh, side room to any fort or base that you build is pretty cool. So hopefully you like this design, and maybe you have some other designs that you would use inside of a tower like this. So. Um, with no further ado, let's get these walls up and start adding some definition later. So here we are, we've got the medium tower constructed out of the 2x1 stone blocks. I've made this to a height of 10. You can go a little bit taller, especially if you reinforce these walls with the iron reinforced boards. Um, so you could kind of embed some of these structures like the wood iron pole into the seams. And you'll notice that that does increase or improve the structural integrity of the entire structure. So where normally we would be orange at the top, you can see here the iron beams have added structural integrity, changing this back to that yellow-green, so still very stable, just with three at the base. Uh, you do want to have your iron beams in contact with the ground for the maximum strength benefit. But we don't need them for this build just because we're only going to go 10 high so we can keep this entire build inside of the camera frame. So now that we've got the walls of the tower built, we're going to be adding some features to it, uh, an entryway, windows, and a rooftop. So I am going to start with the door. Having a way to go in and out is going to be useful. So if we take out three blocks, you can walk through three blocks vertically, one block wide. You can walk through that pretty easily and it doesn't clip the camera down. Uh, if we were to leave that block in the top center, you could still pass through there, but it might clip you sometimes a little bit uh, close to your head, especially if you have uneven terrain or if we were to add a floor plank in there Sometimes the floors offset just enough to block you from entering. So you could get away with two if you like that shorter appearance of the door, but I do recommend we stick with three just to keep some good clearance above the character's head. So to finish off that door frame, you can add some features like the stone arch. And we're going to clip that onto the bottom of the block at the top of the door. And then the same thing, spin it around 180 degrees. So we're lining it up even with the row above the door. And it creates just a nice arched appearance without clipping the character again. Uh, some other things you can do to enhance the doorways, of course, are to frame it with wood. Maybe even add a door in there. Again, if we keep the same alignment as the facing, it doesn't really contrast too heavily with the curvature of the wall. And we can add in, even if you wanted to, some of these uh, dark wood arches to create that sort of a door frame. 
but I'm just going to keep this simple to show you if you add a door to this what it would look like. So you could have the door set on the outside here like this. And sure, it does clip through the stone a little bit. Maybe that looks a little immersion breaking, but I think that looks all right. Just from a finished appearance on the outside. And likewise, you could put this door set on the inside. The trick again to make sure that it's just aligning with that row above the door frame and not aligning with the edges of the stones on the left or right side of the door frame. And here, what this door frame will do for you is it will allow you to keep that arched stone aesthetic from the outside. Get these wood frame planks. And with the inset door, I think that looks even better, especially if you're going to add some lighting features or signage to the outside. Um, say, for example, we want to call this the kitchen. So I think just having the depth of field with that door uh, really makes it pop out, gives it some uh, nice shading, and breaks up that contour of just the flat exterior wall space. Like you know that there is an inside when you look at this door. So speaking of the inside, when we come in, it does look pretty barren inside. Uh, we have a few options for flooring, uh, a lot of cool patterns out there. We're not gonna get into floor patterns in this video, but if you are interested in seeing some different floor patterns, you can certainly check out other players' work. Now, I do need to get a pickaxe, so we're going to spawn one of those in. And the reason that we need this pickaxe is because we want to just give one hit in the middle of the floor and then use that as a place to stand while we level the rest of the floor from the inside here. Now, if we just kind of edge that towards the outside, when we come back out, you'll see it doesn't really take away from the bottom of the structure. It still appears to be in contact with the ground all the way around the outside. And if it isn't, you can just adjust it from the outside again by leveling the ground on the outside. And this allows us to place the uh, stone bricks in that slightly depressed ground. So you can see previously in this video I was not able to get the snap in place for these floor pieces. But now with that depression in the ground we are able to snap the stone floors into the bottom layer of the structure. But there you can see, uh, kind of zoomed out here, it's an interesting pattern. Uh, it's nothing elaborate, and it covers all the floor. You can run across the entire area seamlessly, including into and out of the tower. So there's no trip point or catch point where it stops you from entering. If there was, you could just simply add another brick right there at the entrance to really give it that finished look. One of the features in this game is cooking, and so obviously the kitchen's going to have some of that involved, uh, starting with the stone oven here. It's got a nice stone appearance that blends well with this medium tower. And to pop that into the wall, you want to put the chimney on the outside, which means that the face of this oven will just be flush with the inside of the tower wall. To get the valid placement, you can remove as many stones as you might need to to get that to snap into place. And then just reconstruct those stones afterwards. And so you get this kind of a nice finished look. Um, still able to access the oven and place items inside of it for cooking. And then on the outside, you'll see that the chimney there is outside of the castle's or the tower's wall. So if we were to add some fuel to it, we do have a bit of wood in our inventory. I'll show you that the smoke all vents on the outside and the oven doesn't get put out by the rain if the chimney is exposed. 
So here, a little bit of smoke comes out when you first put fuel into the oven. But then all of the smoke you can see venting out of the back here, so it will not create a toxic environment damaging the health of your character. Now the same is not true for a cooking fire, so you might be wondering where would a cooking fire go inside of this kitchen? Obviously we're going to need a spit to cook meat and serpent flesh and things like that, which means that we do need to build ventilation into the roof somehow. Ventilation that provides overhead shelter, ventilation that allows smoke to escape, and keeps the rain out from extinguishing the fire. So here under the miscellaneous tab we have the hearth. Again, that nice stone look. You could do a raised stone hearth. Something I like to do with this build is kind of embed that into the ground. To do that we're just going to get rid of some of those floor structures. And sometimes it can be difficult to get it to sink if you don't have something to snap it against on the far side that's below grade. So you might need to come in here like this with a pickaxe Take a couple of wax against the ground to just lower that ground level a bit. And you'll see now that the uh, hearth is in the ground. And for this I do recommend that you hold down the shift key while doing the placement. And you could add some extra framing to help align that hearth. See on the outside here. Again, all of the ground can be repaired as needed. So you could just snap a piece of wood on the outside there, something that you could align the hearth up against from the inside. And you see once my cursor clicks over that, it gives you a little bit of uh, maneuverability. You can change the uh, height of the hearth along the height of that wall piece. What we're trying to do is just get this to blend in with the even height of the ground below it. We'll get some wood into that fire so you can see that it does actually burn without being fully exposed to the open air, but you do want to be careful of that. Sometimes the fires do go out if you have them embedded into a wall just a little too far. Oh, there you go. See, that one's just a little too far set into the wall. So it may periodically get extinguished just because it's not able to fully vent. Now another option, of course, is to build this into the outside. So I will also show that feature in this video. I just wanted to show you how to embed this structure into the ground just to give you that finished look with the floor piece. And sometimes you might need to stand in the fire to get some of these blocks to place properly. But again, uh, easy solution, easy fix, easy workaround for that is to come to the outside, dig down a little ways, and you'll be able to see where you're trying to place that brick from the outside. Once you have everything in place in the floor with the hearth, you can level the ground back out. And that way it fully hides those edges and corners from the outside. Now you'll notice you still do get the benefit of being close to the fire even while you're outside. So again, having this kitchen tower um, is just a nice feature to have because the open area outside of a kitchen you could use for crops, gardening, but still have the benefit of the fire's warmth while you're out there gardening. So you can see it uh, flushes into the floor quite nicely. You do have to be careful you don't want to stand in the fire pit. But once you add the spit cooking iron station, that will block you from running into the fire we can get that aligned just on that front edge a little bit. And there we go. So your spit fits over the fire. You can cook your meat and the spit itself will keep you from running into the fire and getting damaged. We could probably even push that a little further back. 
but we still have the problem of the ventilation at the top. How are we going to get rid of the smoke? And the simple answer is a staggered roof that you cannot see from the outside. So smoke vents best with the 45 degree angled roof as opposed to the 22 degree or 30, 26 degree, there we go. So up towards the top, but not all the way to the top. We don't want this showing outside of the tower. We're just going to place an interlocking ring of roof tiles. And it doesn't have to go all the way around, just enough to intersect with the roof that we're going to build underneath of here. And we could extend this out to a second board if we wanted to. Uh, if you are building without debug mode, you would use scaffolding, just building ladders to get up to height to work on some of these higher features, higher elevation features. So let's take a look from the outside just so you can see about where this is placed. The roof that I added interior of the tower vents the smoke towards the center. And you really can't see it from the ground. And it is at about the height of the tower's top. So if we wanted to add a floor in here later, we could add a vent and uh, still have a portion of the roof that is walkable. Uh, from the top you can see just how the uh, smoke is accumulating inside of this cone and getting funneled out. And that means that we really only need to capture the other half of the roof to create shelter. But the fire itself is protected from the elements just with that much. So the underlying roof is going to have to be lower down. And this is where I say that we're not going to have a lot of storage options. Some of you might have thought at the beginning of this video that, oh, you could just build vertical, put some storage up in the walls higher up. And yes, that's true, we could do that. Um, I'm going to use the 26 degree roof tiles to finish out this second layer below. You can see we're already starting to get the rested bonus just by standing under that little corner of the roof. And same idea, we're just going to place roof tiles in covering the area of the roof that was not covered by the higher, steeper roof. So there you go, we've got a split roof that gives you full protection from the elements and allows good ventilation for a large fire like the hearth. Now again, we could just go on the outside of this and build a chimney structure. If you're into that sort of a build, like you like the aesthetic of having chimneys on the outside, you could very easily place your hearth uh, lengthwise or Width-wise, on the outside, snaps into place pretty well. And then you would just build a chimney around the outside, maybe even giving yourself access to loading firewood. So let's just do a quick demonstration of what that might look like. And this one I won't embed into the ground We'll leave that one up. So again, we can just use the uh, snap feature to get these blocks lined up with the inside edge of the tower. Framing in the hearth. You 
can see that it's not a perfect fit there uh, because these stones and the angles that they rotate uh, don't evenly space out. But you can blend that in just by adding a small block, maybe alternating left and right as you build the chimney up. And at the top of this chimney, you do have a few options you could use, such as the arched stone arches. Uh, you want to have probably a two stone, two block height of open air for each one stone depth of vent. So that means for this stone arch to truly vent, we would need to place the top of the chimney about there and we could have a vent opening up to the outside. And again, this is not to show off like, you know, how to build the best chimney or anything like that. This is just to show you an example of how you could create a structure like this to vent the smoke from a hearth that is placed outside of the tower if you don't want all that smoke coming to the inside. So there's just sort of a rough example. Um, you would want to build, of course, something here to block the firelight if you wanted that more obscured from the outside. Or you could leave it open if you like that aesthetic where you can kind of see inside of the kitchen. Placing your spit so that anybody from the outside that's trying to get in would not be able to run underneath or jump over that spit. So it does create a physical barrier still protecting it and uh, covering it from the elements. Now rain might be able to angle into this. So other options you can do is to just bridge that with arches along the sides or perhaps even using roof tiles. But it's really your choice how you build these chimneys. A lot of people spend time creating them, but as you can see it creates quite a lot of bulk onto the tower um, possibly something that you could blend into a wall if you're building a castle wall into the tower. You could incorporate the wall as part of your ventilation system for a fireplace. But I do want to stick to the interior hearth. So we're going to clear all this out of the way so that we can just see the tower in and of itself. I know what you're thinking as you saw me capping off that wall again. You're thinking windows. This tower needs windows. Now you may have seen in the small tower build that I've done in another video that there is a arrow slit window that works fairly well for defense of an interior space. And you can incorporate these into a build like this as well. So by clearing out two, blo two blocks we have enough space that someone could get through if there was an enemy player just trying to get in and pilfer your chests. If we add the 1x2 blocks into the corners, as in the previous build, creating the arrow slit, you'll see that they merge together and there's no window. So the workaround for this is to remove another section of blocks, fill those in with single blocks, and that gives you the approximate three wide that we need to create the arrow slit window. Now you don't even need to have like an arrow slit window. You could do a decorative window, particularly from the inside if we're staying with the offset appearance. Frame it in with some wood and make it look nice. Um, so I'll do one of each option just to show you a little more detail about what I'm talking about with sort of a bay view window and a defensive window. So again, these blocks are going to be rotated two clicks from the alignment of the stone beneath it. So here it's lined up with the stone beneath it. We're going to go one, two, bring that over to the edge and snap it into place. And here, same thing, two click rotation. And from the inside, these should align with the seam of the inside edge of the window. Now we can still run through this to fix that problem, change the rotation. 
from two clicks to a single click. Now we cannot run inside or outside through that window. Creating that defensible arrow slit window, it's a little larger than on the uh, small tower build, but it works just as well. So from inside, if you're trying to defend with a bow and arrow, you have an area that you can shoot out from, and enemies have a hard time getting in. So very easy to sidestep a shot, <laughs> or for low archery skill, to miss a shot through a big window. But some people want more of an aesthetic appeal, something that looks nice for a window. And for this, we're going to go ahead and blast out two columns again. We're going to create a bay window, essentially. Now, that might not be the best place for it with the fire right there, so let's cap this off again and move this to the other side. So we'll deconstruct this turret window here and build the bay window in here. So if you decide to knock out two columns wide, you would still have a third one here on this one side or the other. Um, I kind of like the idea of differentiating, changing the details, uh, breaking up those contours a little bit. So instead of just having this straight line coming all the way down that continues through the window, this creates sort of a visual divide where the symmetries are offset. We still have our nice square corners that humans love to look at square shapes. But it creates an offset to the entire framing of the building itself. And just using some wood beams, snapping around this feature, using the blocks and uh, the same direction, same parallel alignment, you can start to overlap a nice window frame on the inside. Kind of gives you that nice farmhouse feel where you've got a combination of wood and stone. Um, particularly in the uh, old medieval times, it was common that uh, stone or masonry work was not built really tall. Um, you would have a strong stone foundation, maybe 8 to 10 feet, and then above that would be a wooden structure. So having a large tower like this is much later period medieval, obviously, to be able to do something like that. But just accenting with wood still gives it a little bit of that authentic feeling. You could add some bars in here uh, as one option, giving it sort of a gated look. And from the outside, you can see it does break up the contour of the uh, outside wall quite nicely. Another option is using the small floor panels Again, parallel with the stones beneath, snapping those into place, and adding a second border around the outside here. And this is a place where you could add decorations. Say, for example, um, use the old flower pot technique where we take some of these wall mounts, turn them into a box, we'll need a gray dwarf brute head. And what this gray dwarf brute head will do is, since it has little flowers at the top, uh, this isn't going to be perfect, obviously. I've got some misalignments here. Oops. I just want to place the uh, brute's head onto one of those wall mounts and just the flowers peek out. And so you can create a little window box there. Nice little accent detail for your kitchen.
So again, that's just simply using the uh, wall mounts. Normally you'd use that to hang trophies on the wall, uh, all of them facing inward. Another option is you could use one wall mount and combine that with some signage to create sort of a wider box and place multiple items against that on the inside. And you can experiment with different items kind of peeking up out of these boxes to create different aesthetics. There's the idea for just sort of a, a nice framed window with a working ledge that you can place objects on. Uh, maybe like uh, in the old storybooks. You could be like Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn stealing a pie from a window seal as it's cooling. And the rest of the inside here, the decorations are pretty straightforward, like as you're uh, increasing the level of your cooking stations, you're going to need your pots and pans. And you can choose whichever area you think is the best fit for those. But as you can see, sometimes hanging these items uh, has restrictions on its placement. So to start with, we do need a cooking station in here uh, to be able to place those objects normally. And how you place that, where you place that is up to you. Maybe add a second fire pit. Uh, you could try to crowd that into the main fire pit. But again, there is going to be a distance, an offset distance like this spice rack. Not only does it need a vertical attachment, but it has to be close enough to the cooking station, the cauldron, in order to be placed. One thing that you could do to work around that is to simply create a peg, comes out of the wall, and mount your spice rack to the bottom of that. There you can see it's close enough. I kind of like the idea that the herbs are hanging over the fire, getting smoked. And your other cooking station items do need to be within proximity, like you can see across the wall from the cauldron is too far for the butcher's block, which means it'll also be too far for your pots and pans. So do plan accordingly for where you're going to be placing your cooking station and how you want that aesthetic to look from the inside. And remember that you can always place wooden beams to offset the wall a little bit and that should allow you to place the crafting station items against that wooden plank where normally there would be a intersection a clip with the wall that would prevent it from being placed so you can see that this tiny little space does get crowded fairly quickly especially if we want to add in a cooking rack so what I oftentimes will do is I will create two cooking stations, one with a hearth that has the large cooking rack, and then I will create a smaller fire pit with the cauldron on the opposite wall. So for example, you could kick through the wall right here, maybe adding a fire pit that vents on the outside placing your cauldron over the top of that so it's accessible from the inside and to prevent the smoke from coming in it doesn't require much you can just put a wooden plank across that right in the front down the sides frames in the pit nicely and it does need to go a little further outside to vent properly so let's knock that wall out we can place a false wall in. So if you ever have problems with chimney ventilation, just add more vertical vent room for the smoke to accumulate and run. And on the inside, what this creates is a nice feature. Let's build this even taller. That way you can see what I'm talking about. If we create a flat wall panel on the inside, what a perfect place to mount your trophies. Right there over the cooking station you could put a boar's head, a deer head, 
whatever trophy you might have. You could even put a shield up there. And some other accents that you can use on the inside is to continue the framing of the wall all the way around. Again, it just changes up the uh, symmetry, the pattern of the full building. So that there's always something interesting for your eyes to look at, some new symmetry. And I think that's about it for the kitchen. Now, as for the outside of the tower, you can decorate this in a lot of different ways. I'm just going to show you one example of using these two by one pillars, the vertical pillars, and offsetting those into the wall. Again, you can use scaffolding without the uh, developer mode if you're building this manually. And you could test different angles, different positions, to create sort of a uh, ribbed structure along the outside, something that gives it a reinforced look. So there's one option, giving it sort of a ribbed effect. And another option is buttressing. So I find that these towers make nice uh, framing for a covered walkway, as example. If you wanted to build some stone arches leading into your garden. So this way, wherever you build this tower in your facility, you can create a buttress, flying buttress coming off of the side, and modify that into an archway, higher or lower, whatever aesthetic meets your build's needs. Maybe tie that into a wall or a fence structure. And this is just sort of a, a cheap, quick build. Not trying to get too fancy with this. Just to show you some of the options that exist for uh, adding on to the tower's features. Uh, if you are interested in building parapets around the top, I recommend checking out the other video that I showed for the small tower build. Uh, you're going to do something very similar, uh, creating protrusions around the outside using the 1x2 stone walls. Uh, the challenge here, you could also use the 2x2 two two stone floors, is capping off the inside. Because you do need to ventilate the smoke if you don't have a chimney. And then if you have a chimney on the outside, obviously that overhang is going to interfere with some of that smoke ventilation as well. So to create vents in the roof, You can see it does not like having floors at that height. As I was saying, to create the vents at the roof at this height, one option is to just leave a gap. So you could create a catwalk on the inside, inside of the parapet here, so you could still fight from the top of the tower, and then just leave this exposed in the middle where the smoke could vent. You could add safety features to it, such as a low wall around the inside to prevent people from walking on the roof.
And another option would be to simply take one brick out of the sidewall itself and embed your floors into the wall that way. And then just expand on each of those floors as you go around. And the result will be a little bit stronger. And you can see it does more completely fill in towards the center of the tower's roof. So I hope that you've uh, benefited from watching this build. I hope that it showed you some neat tricks that you could incorporate into your own builds. This is Nobbler. This is the medium tower build out of stone and the conversion into a kitchen. So I hope you've enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.